everybody, and welcome to the MMA Training Bible's Guide to the Heart. I'm Dr. Jason Gillis. I firmly believe, uh, as, a, as a professor in this area, uh, that really knowledge is power. If you want to understand how your body adapts to training, if you want to understand how to optimize your training and ultimately your performance, then I think it's important to understand these basic principles. So that's really what these videos are about, is just trying to teach you the basics, trying to teach you the basics of how muscles work and, and, and how your heart works and the circulatory system and the respiratory system and, and all those different components, basic training principles. So you can empower yourself to learn, uh, uh, take all the information that's available out there and there's a lot of good information out there and there's, there's a lot of bad information as well. And I want you to be able to sift through it find what works for you and, and use it to improve your own performance when you're, when you're training and when you're fighting. So with that said, let's get into this video. And again, what we wanna talk about, it's the heart. Now specifically, we wanna cover a couple of things in this video lecture. We wanna talk about the main function of the heart. And then we're gonna talk about the anatomical structures of the heart. We're gonna talk about the chambers and the valves. And we're gonna talk about these amazing little cells that generate and spread electrical signals through your whole heart and really drive the whole process whereby your heart contracts. And then we're gonna finish off this video talking about how we measure that electrical activity of the heart using what's called an electrocardiogram. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So this is it, this is what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna to talk about the heart. And over on the far left hand side, you can see this is an actual human heart and this is a, a dissection and gross anatomy. Uh, and the, this picture, this video, uh, it's found from Albany Medical School and you can follow that link and you can see this whole dissection process. It's pretty amazing. Um, so that's what we're gonna talk about. And you can see in the middle image here, this is the, an anterior view on the heart also from Albany Medical School. Now. It gets a little bit disgusting, it's, it gets a little bit gross and hard to see anatomical structures. So largely what I'm gonna be doing in this video is I'm gonna be walking through sort of idealized diagrams of these anatomical structures. So you see over on the far right, this is a nice little schematic. And this is what I'm gonna be using to, to teach you about the heart and all the different structures and what it does. So what's the main purpose of the heart? What's the main function? Well, quite simply, it's to generate pressure and pump blood through all the vessels in the body, the head to toe. And you can kind of see the complexity of all those vessels in the body. Oftentimes when you see diagrams, again, they're oversimplified, but I like to let you guys know and I like to let my students know that in most cases, it's a lot more complex than a textbook would let on. So let's just give you a little view of that. What we're looking at here in the left image, it's, uh, it's essentially images taking, taken with a 3D scanner, putting together the great structures, the great vessels uh, in the human body. So you can see the heart uh, right here in the center, and then you can see all of the large uh, structures and the large vessels. But really, you have a lot of vessels, uh, a lot more than this, that spread out in the skin, uh, that spread out all throughout the body. And what you can see in this right image is really more accurate, uh, an accurate picture of what all the vessels in the body actually looks like. And you can, you can, I think, assess this quite intuitively. If you just look at your finger and you push down, it turns white for a second, and when you release it, it turns red again. Those are all individual small vessels that you're compressing. And I think that's better reflected in the right image here. And this image, uh, if you get a chance to go to the, uh, the event Body Worlds, uh, it's uh, anatomical structures, uh, and it's more art than science, but it's pretty amazing to go see. So what you're looking at here, it's uh, a comparable image, a comparable section of the body, but you can see the real complexity of, of the vessels in the body, and that's why I like this image. Okay, so now that we know the function of the heart, what I wanna do is just give you a little overview on the basic structures of the heart, the anatomical structures of the heart. And we're gonna start by talking about the, the, um, the, the chambers. So I'm gonna bring up a little image here. Uh, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna work our way through it. We're gonna, we're gonna draw some pictures. If you've seen any of my other videos, you know that I like to, to work in, uh, in, uh, in drawing. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, so the first thing that I want you to understand is that the, the heart, it has four chambers. 
horrible writing, I know, but I think we'll get by with it. So let's identify those four chambers. So the first chamber, it's right here. The next chamber, it's right over here. And then there's another big chamber right down here. And then there's another, finally another big chamber right down here. So we're counting these chambers. We got one chamber here, another here, another here, and then another here. So that's the first thing I want you to know is the heart has four chambers. And generally, um, these are divided uh, by a, a couple different ways, but I'm gonna just give you the names of them. Um, these top chambers, so if we look right across the heart, these two top chambers, uh, these are called atria. So we have a right, a right atrium, and then we have a left, a left atrium. Now you may be asking yourself the question, well why is the left atrium on the right side of the picture as you're looking at it and why is the right atrium on the left side of the picture as you're looking at it? Um, generally, whenever we're talking about anatomy, then um, it's always coming from the opposite image. So this is as though the person is standing in front of you looking at you. So if this is the case, then this is actually their right side. So we're looking at the, an the anatomy of the heart from their right side um, or, or from, their, from them facing us. So that's why this is actually the right side uh, of the heart uh, as, it's, as it sits in your chest. So again, we have two atria and, and over here we have the right atrium and over here we have the left atrium. And then we have two bottom structures down here below the atrium uh, and these are called ventricles. So we're going to over here, this structure is going to be the right ventricle and then over here this this structure of course is going to be the the left the left ventricle so this is important these are the four chambers of the heart the right atrium the right uh, uh, ventricle the left atrium and the left ventricle and we're going to talk a little bit later on about how blood moves through this heart but for right now i just want you to understand that these are the four structures one other interesting way that you can look at the heart is it actually is kind of two pumps, not just one pump. If we're to divide the heart right down the middle, uh, then what we're going to see is just one pump on this side. So we'll have a right pump, and then we're gonna have a left pump over here. So I'd like you to learn to associate the right atrium uh, with the right ventricle, and then the left atrium with the left ventricle. But anyway, the mo most important thing I want you to get from this slide is that there are four chambers to the heart, and you should know what those chambers are. And we can abbreviate these with um, right atrium, right ventricle, RV, and then over here it's gonna be the right atrium, or sorry, the, the left atrium, and then the left ventricle. So that's how we'll um, refer to these from now on, in terms of RA, RV, and LV and uh, uh, LA. Okay, let's, let's move on to the next structure that we want to identify, and we'll start with a, a nice clean image here. Okay, so the next thing that we want to talk about are valves. And also in the heart, there are four valves that we want to talk about. And you can see here that the valves are identified kind of in white. So here is one valve. And here is another valve. And then here is another valve. And tucked away up here, it's hard to see it, but there's another valve right, right there. So what do valves do? Valves, kind of like in plumbing or, uh, or if you're interested in mechanics, valves are responsible for controlling the, the direction of, of blood flow in the heart. And these valves, they're gonna be opening and closing passively uh, which is it's totally driven by the pressure gradient and the pressure of course in the heart it's going to be created by the pumping itself and the, and the blood that's in each of these chambers so in total there are four valves and there are kind of two types of valves one type of valve they're called atrioventricular valves so i'm going to write that down here atrio atrioventricular valves. 
And the other type of valve, uh, valves are called semilunar. So these are two different types of valves. So you're going to have two times atrioventricular valves and you're going to have two times semilunar valves. So what do these mean? Why do they call them uh, atrioventricular and why do they call them semilunar? Well, semilunar valves, they're called semilunars because, well, lunar means moon and these are kind of shaped like the moon. They're kind of, um, you know, shaped like a, like a, like a half moon. Uh, atrioventricular valves are called that because they control blood flow from the atrium to the ventricles. So immediately I guess that you're going to be able to figure out where these atrioventricular valves are uh, just by their name. So we know what's this structure up here. This structure is going to be the, the right atrium and then this is the right ventricle over here. So we know that this valve is most probably going to be an atrioventricular valve, right? And then if we can identify the left atrium, which is over here, if, we, if, you, if you recall, and then we have over here the left ventricle, um, we can identify where the, the other atrioventricular valve is gonna be. It's gonna be right here. So let's put some labels on those here. And in, incidentally, we're gonna call these A, V, atrioventricular valve here. So this over here is going to be your right AV valve and this over here is going to be your left AV valve okay um, now we want to talk about these other valves these these semilunar valves so where are these located well I said the heart is a pump and there's really two different pumps there's the right pump so we can split this whole heart into two again. There's this right pump, which is the right atrium and the right ventricle. And then there's this left pump, it's the left ventricle uh, and the, uh, the left atrium. So the blood is always gonna be pumped from the heart, from the ventricles. So uh, when blood fills up at the ventricles, it's pushed out of the heart. And so one of the valves that stands in the way of blood being pushed out of the heart, it's this semilunar valve right here. And this one is called, if we go up here, it's called the pulmonary valve. Pulmonary valve. Uh, and why is it called the pulmonary valve? Well, it's called the pulmonary valve because the blood from this ventricle right here, the right ventricle, is going to be pushed out over there and then over here into the pulmonary circulation. And we'll talk about that later, but the pulmonary circulation, it's just the blood that's pushed over your lungs. So this is the pulmonary circulation, so it's called the pulmonary valve. It's a gatekeeper um, to, the, uh, to the pulmonary circulation. And then of course I said we have another semilunar valve, and you can you can kind of see that one right over here, right over here, it's hard to tell, but let's um, put that arrow down here and we'll describe it over here. So we're talking about this little structure right over here. That is called the aortic. The aortic valve. So that's also a semilunar valve. It's kind of shaped in that sort of half moon um, image. And you can see uh, it moves all the way up over here into this big aortic arch. And this valve controls uh, blood that is pumped around the body into the head. So you can see it's gonna be pumped up here. It's also gonna be pumped uh, over here, that way, that way, and that way, and that way, and, and, and even down here. So um, this, the, the, the the, um, the aortic valve controls entry into the, the systemic circulation, which delivers blood to the, uh, the rest of the body, the head, the upper body, uh, and, uh, and the lower body. So let's give you a little summary of the important points that you need to know here. So let's start by talking about uh, when blood when it comes in the, uh, the right atrium. So let's say we've got a whole bunch of blood coming in the right atrium. Well, what happens is the blood, it builds up pressure and then eventually there'll be a little contraction in the right atrium and that'll 
force blood down here to the right ventricle and it's going to go through the right AV valve. And just so you know, there's another name, just to make it a little more confusing for you, um, there's another name for the, for the right AV valve and that's the tricuspid. Tricuspid valve. And then from there, we have all this blood filling up in the right ventricle. And then when that right ventricle contracts, it'll push blood up here towards the pulmonary circulation but before it gets into the pulmonary circulation, it has to go through the pulmonary valve, right up here. And then so the blood is pushed into the pulmonary circulation, and then what'll eventually happen is the blood will come back from the pulmonary circulation, and then it'll all dump into the left atrium, right up here. And so when the blood enters into that left atrium, eventually it'll build up pressure and the, the atrium will contract, and it'll push blood down into the left ventricle. And it's going to be moving through the left AV valve. And another name for that is the mitral valve. And so it moves beyond the mitral valve and now we're in the left ventricle. And what'll happen then, once all that blood fills up in that left ventricle, it'll build up pressure. And these big ventricular walls here, what they're gonna do is they're gonna power a big contraction and it'll push blood through this aortic valve into this big aorta over here. And then that blood will be pumped out to the, the, the whole body, the head, the torso, uh, the upper body appendages and the lower body uh, appendages. And so uh, th that's what you need to know from this slide. You need to know those different valves uh, and, and that's really the main thing. You don't need to know the direction of blood flow yet. Okay, let's bring up another clean diagram here to work with. Okay, so we talked about the different structures, we talked about the chambers of the heart, and we talked about the, the valves, and we gave you a little view on how blood moves through the heart. Uh, and we mentioned that heart muscles can contract and they can help drive blood through the heart. The big question is, how do those heart muscles contract? So. What I want to talk about now are these amazing cells that allow heart muscles to contract. And uh, the first cell that I want to talk about, it's right here, it's the, the top yellow little, little node here, and that is going to be called the SA, the SA node. It's SA stands for sinoatrial node. You find it in the atrium. Now this is really an amazing little uh, little cell, little structure. It spontaneously discharges, it creates an electrical impulse. And you may have heard of this term called the pacemaker. While you're looking at it, this is the pacemaker of the heart. And in fact, it spontaneously discharges at a rate of 60 to 80 times per, um, per minute. So, the reason why it's the pacemaker is because it, it discharges so often, 60 to 80 times per minute. And this is essentially going to uh, make your resting heart rate what it is. So if you were to measure your resting heart rate for, for an average human, it's going to be somewhere around 60 to 80. Of course, if you train a lot, you can change that. You can, you can lower that. Um, but uh, that's not something we're going to talk too much about in this video. Just we're talking about the basics. So what you see here is you have this SA node. Uh, and it spontaneously depolarizes. And you can see these connections between this node and, and what looks like another node here. These connections uh, that connect it to this other node, they're called internodal pathways. And basically what they're doing is they're taking the signal, the electrical signal that was generated in the cell, and then passing it along to this other node. But before we talk about this other node, I wanna talk a little bit more about these internodal pathways and, and, and how they disperse the electrical charge. So first thing I want you to see is we've got this, this SA node and uh, it's embedded in the, uh, the right atrium and you see these, these uh, other uh, pathways that go over to the, to the left atrium. And so this is really the first step is we have this electrical charge and then it causes a contraction of both of these uh, atrial walls and that's going to ultimately build up pressure in these atrium and cause the blood to move down to the ventricles. And then what's gonna happen, of course, is the ventricles contract. So we need to have a little bit of time here 
for the electrical charge to move through the atrial walls and then cause the contraction. And so what happens is this electrical signal will be embedded in these walls and then eventually it'll pass the signal on to this other node. And this node, it's called the AV node. And it's called the atrioventricular node. And so this node is responsible for delaying the electrical impulse uh, before passing it on to the ventricles. And so you see that this AV node, it has connections down into the ventricles, which start right here. So what would happen if there, there was no delay here with the AV node? Uh, well, what would happen is um, there would be an immediate uh, electrical contraction in the atrium and the signal would be immediately passed onto the ventricles and the whole heart would contract at once. And that's not how an efficient pump works. A pump works by first pushing blood from one area to another. Uh, and that's really what we're, happening, what we're seeing happen here is first we've got the atria contracting, pushing blood in the ventricles, and that's all generated by the uh, SA node. So the SA node depolarizes at around 60 to 80 beats per minute, and the AV node, it depolarizes uh, less often, about 40 to 60 times per minute. And that's um, why we call this one the pacemaker, because this one is much uh, more slow. It doesn't set the pace of the heart. Um, what do we got next? Let's, uh... Okay, so once we have the signal being passed on from the AV node, it's going to move over to this atrioventricular bundle. This is called an, an AV, an AV bundle. And so the interesting thing about this is that it separates into to two, a left and right bundle branch. So the right bundle branch is going to move all the way down into the right ventricles, and it's going to divide even further into these very small structures that really innervate the, the ventricle walls, and those are called Purkinje fibers. And you see the same thing happening on the other side uh, with the left ventricles over here. So this AV bundle will divide into the, the AV left and right bundle branch, or sorry, just the AV bundle branch, which divides further into Purkinje fibers. Uh, you can see those, those Purkinje fibers. Purkinje fibers. And so uh, what's going to happen is these Purkinje fibers, this whole system whereby we're, we're going from larger diameter fibers to smaller diameter fibers, it allows for this full complete contraction uh, of the ventricles. And that's really what's powering blood um, to be ejected from the ventricles into either the pulmonary circulation or into the systemic uh, circulation. Okay, I think that's probably enough detail for these amazing little structures that cause the heart to, to contract. What I want to talk about next is how we can actually measure the electrical activity of the heart. So we're going to go back to the, the PowerPoint. So, uh, all of these amazing little cells, they, they cause the heart to contract. They generate electrical activity, and the main one is the SA node. Now, the other amazing thing is that all of the tissues and cells in the body, they, they have all sorts of electrolytes in them, sodium and potassium. And this happens, um, all structures, all, all cells in the skin, even on top of the skin, even right down through the body, all the organs. Uh, what this means is that the electrical signal that uh, is generated by the SA node, it will conduct through all the tissues of the body and it will actually conduct right to the skin. So what this means is if you had a specialized type of sensor that was sensitive to electrical signals, then you can place it on top of the skin and it can pick up the electrical activity of the heart and it can tell us a lot about how the heart functions. And now you know that the electrical signal moves through the heart at different rates and different paces. Uh, and if you can measure that electrical signal in time, then you can see and I guess gauge the function of the heart. And this is done through what's called an electrocardiogram, which you probably heard before, it's an ECG. And a real good way to, to take a measure of the heart is by using 10, 10 electrodes, which have about 12 leads, and you place them all around the heart. So I'm talking um, on, on the left side of the chest, on the right side of the chest. You can even measure how that signal propagates along the limbs. So you can place electrodes on the limbs, including your wrists, 
uh, and even down by your ankles or so. So what this does, it provides different electrical views of the heart and it's an amazing diagnostic tool for coronary artery disease and arrhythmias, different things like that. But what you end up getting from, uh, from this uh, electrical activity is this characteristic pattern of, of, of waves. Now, you may not know this, but you can measure electrical activity in a unit called millivolts. So if we're to place those sensors on top of your skin, we can measure the electrical activity in millivolts. And we end up getting this uh, characteristic wave pattern. And there's a couple of different patterns in this, in this uh, wave that I want to just briefly tell you about. Because if you've ever gone to a hospital and you've seen this, this weird little wave uh, when they hook up uh, an ECG to you, then you may have wondered what it is. And I want to tell you what that is. There's three different patterns I want to talk about. There's a P wave, and there's a QRS complex, and there's something called a T wave. And these are all different things you get from that ECG trace. So let's, let's talk about what, what those are. Let's show you what they are. Okay, let's put our attention on this little figure over here. We're looking at millivolts on the vertical scale, and it's gonna be measured starting at zero, and it can go up, and it can go down. So let's say it goes up to around two millivolts, and let's say it goes down to, let's say, negative two millivolts. The first characteristic wave pattern I wanna talk about is this little P wave. And what this P wave is, is remember, it's a measuring the electrical activity of the heart, and specifically, it's measuring the electrical activity in the atria when they depolarize and when they contract. So what special cell is gonna cause this contraction, if you remember back to the previous slides, it's gonna be the SA node. So remember, the SA node sets the pace of the heart. It's gonna cause this depolarization. And you can actually measure that with this ECG. So that's what this P wave is, that first little wave, that's measuring atrial depolarization and atrial contraction uh, as a direct result of the activity of the P wave. And then the next big thing that we see is this QRS complex right here. So it, uh, what happens, we have a little dip, and then we have a big increase in electrical activity, and then we have a reduction in electrical activity, and then it returns back to normal. So what is that all about? Well, basically, the QRS complex, it's showing us ventricular depolarization, and those big ventricles, they're gonna cause a big electrical impulse. And so what's happening here is this is when the impulse spreads from the AV bundle to the Purkinje fibers and then to the ventricles. That's that whole QRS complex. But of course, what happens is when you have muscles contract, they have to relax. So you have atrial contraction here, which forces the blood into the ventricles. And then during this phase, you're also going to have atrial relaxation. But you can't see that activity here because uh, all of the electrical activity associated with those, uh, those ventricular contractions, it's so great, it kind of washes the atrial repolarization out. So you can't see it here, but it happens in the QRS complex. And then we have this, this T wave, and that is just simply ventricular repolarization. So whenever you have a depolarization, it's gonna be followed by a repolarization. So uh, that T wave just represents uh, the, the ventricles of returning back to normal, uh, ventricular repolarization. So I hope this sheds a little bit of light on what those traces that you're seeing are when you're in the, when you're in the hospital, and hopefully that's not too often. Okay, so let's give you a little summary here uh, of what we covered. First, the main function of the heart is to pump blood. And then we've reviewed the anatomical structures, the big ones of the heart that I want you to know. We've got those four chambers, the left ventricle, the right ventricle, the left atrium, and the right atrium. And then we've got those four valves. We've got two AV valves, the tricuspid and the mitral, and then we've got these two semilunar valves, the pulmonary and the aortic. And then we've got these amazing electrical cells that allow the muscles in the heart to contract and push blood around the body uh, to the pulmonary and systemic circulations. Those are the SA and AV node and the internodal pathways. And then we have these AV bundles which separate into the left and right bundle branch and ultimately lead to Purkinje fibers which cause the full contraction of those ventricles. Lastly, you can measure the, all of this electrical activity with an electrocardiogram or an ECG and you can diagnose all sorts of amazing things uh, when you use this tool. So that's it for this video lecture. I hope that you learned something. Uh, if you wanna know more about the MMA Training Bible, then please visit the site. There's a lot more articles, there's a lot more video lectures there.